Hey everyone, ready for another deep dive? Always. Awesome. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be talking about something pretty fundamental. Yeah. Oxygen. Can't live without it. Exactly, it's literally all around us. Right. But we rarely stop and think about just how crucial it is. Mm. And to help us explore all the amazing facets of oxygen, okay. we'll be drawing primarily from Nick Lane's book, Oxygen, The Molecule That Made the World. Great book. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Prepare to be surprised. Because uh -huh. we're going to uncover some pretty unexpected things yeah. about oxygen's discovery, its role in evolution, mm -hmm. its potential toxicity, mm -hmm. even its connection to aging and disease. You ready? Yeah, do it. Okay. So let's start by going way back to the beginning. How did we even figure out that oxygen existed? Well, you might think discovering something as fundamental as oxygen right. would be a pretty straightforward, you know. Yeah, you'd think so. That Greek moment. Like, oh, here it is. Right. But it was actually uh not so much. Not so much. It was more of a a scientific free for all. A free for all. Okay, tell me more. Well, you have Carl Wilhelm Scheele, okay. who isolated oxygen first back in the 1770s. Wow, okay. But here's the thing. Yeah. He didn't publish his findings for years. He just sat on them. He sat on them. Why? I mean, it's huge. Oh, I know, right? That's a big discovery. It is. You'd think you'd want to tell everybody. Exactly. Then we have Joseph Priestley, yeah. who isolated oxygen around the same time as Scheele okay. and was much quicker to publish his findings. Okay. But his understanding was clouded by this idea called the phlogiston theory. Okay. Phlogiston theory. So what's that? Okay. So imagine this. Scientists back then, they thought that when things burned, mm. they released this invisible substance called phlogiston into the air. Okay. So to them, oxygen was deflogisticated air. Like air with the phlogiston sucked out. Exactly. So they had it completely backward. Yeah. Pretty much. What? It really shows how even brilliant minds can be misled. Yeah. But the thing is, decades before this, yeah. you have this Dutch inventor named Cornelius Drebbel. Oh, interesting. Who builds a submarine in the 1600s. Hold on. A <laughs> submarine in the 1600s? I know, right? Yeah. It's pretty incredible. That's amazing. But the really cool part is that Drebbel, he figures out that there's a specific part of air, which we now know is oxygen, that's needed for breathing. Okay. And that it can get used up in an enclosed space, like, well... Like his submarine. Exactly, like his submarine. Right he even comes up with a way to replenish it, basically creating an early oxygen tank centuries before oxygen was officially, you know, quote-unquote, discovered. Wow, that's incredible. He's way ahead of his time. Way ahead of his time. Yeah. And then you also have John Mayo... Okay. An English scientist who in the 1670s also has this remarkably accurate understanding of oxygen. Okay, okay. He figures out that it's not the entire air we breathe, mm. but a specific component that's, well, crucial for life. So we have these early insights we do. From, from Mayo and Drebbel. Mm -hmm. And then like a century later, scientists are still stuck on this phlogiston theory. Yeah, yeah. So... It seems like understanding oxygen was a pretty bumpy road. Oh, for sure. A lot of twists and turns. But as we started to actually understand oxygen, yeah. it really changed how we view life. Mm -hmm. It even led to this idea of an oxygen holocaust. An oxygen holocaust. <laughs> okay, now that sounds yeah. intense. It's a concept uh, put forth by Lynn Margulis. Okay. And it suggests that when oxygen first started appearing in Earth's atmosphere, Yeah. It, was, well, it wasn't a welcome change for all life forms. Okay. In fact, it might have caused a mass extinction. Wow. So oxygen, the thing we need to survive, was once a deadly poison. Yeah, basically. But the interesting thing is the geological record tells a slightly different story. It suggests a more gradual shift. Okay, so how did oxygen go from, well potential killer right. to essential for life. That is the question. Yeah. And it's where evolution really comes in. Mm. So picture this. You have a world slowly filling up with oxygen okay. thanks to all these tiny organisms like cyanobacteria uh -huh. pumping it out through photosynthesis. Okay. And those that couldn't handle it, well, they didn't make it. Survival of the fittest. Exactly. But then some life forms figured out how to not just survive, but actually use this oxygen okay. to thrive. And this is where mitochondria come in. Ah, uh, the powerhouses of the cell. Okay, remind me, how do they help? Okay, so mitochondria, it's thought, were once free living bacteria okay. that got engulfed by larger cells. Engulfed? Yeah, like swallowed up. 
Okay. But instead of being digested, yeah. they formed this partnership. Mm -hmm. And this ancient merger, that's what we call it, is the basis of the endosymbiotic theory. And it allowed these cells to use oxygen to create energy much more efficiently. So it was a win-win situation. Total win-win. Yeah. The ancient bacteria had a safe place to live. And the larger cells got a serious energy upgrade. Wow. Talk about a power couple. Yeah, it's a great example of symbiosis. Okay, so this is already making me think about oxygen in a whole new way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not just something we breathe. Right. It's a part of, like, the very foundation of our cells. Yeah. And this oxygen revolution really paved the way for... Well, everything. For us. Yeah, for larger, more complex life forms like us. So you're saying that without oxygen, we wouldn't even be here. That's what the evidence suggests. The ability to efficiently use oxygen for energy led to the incredible diversity of life we see today. Mm. It's a story that goes back billions of years, and it all started with that little oxygen molecule. Wow. Okay, I'm officially hooked. But before we go any further, yeah, we need to talk about a pretty pivotal moment in Earth's history. The Great Oxidation Event. Ah, yes. The GOE. A GOE. Yeah. A dramatic time about 2.4 billion years ago okay. when oxygen levels in the atmosphere just shot up. Wow. And we actually have physical evidence of this event. Yeah. Banded iron formations. Okay. Banded iron formations. What are those exactly? Imagine these vast layers of rock. Right with these really distinct red and gray bands. Okay. Essentially, they're ancient rust deposits. So, like... A giant rust fingerprint. Exactly. Left behind in the rocks. Yeah, and they mark the rise of oxygen in the oceans. Wow. It's crazy to think about how something invisible... I know, right? ...like oxygen uh -huh. could leave behind this massive, tangible mark. It's pretty amazing. And its influence goes way beyond these formations. Yeah. It's in the air we breathe, the food we eat, even how our bodies function. But as we sort of hinted at before, yeah. oxygen also has a darker side. Okay, enough with the teasers. <laughs> All right. That's oh. the dark side. Uh, I mean, we talked about how it's life-giving. Yeah. But I'm ready to hear about the potential for destruction. Okay, well, to understand that, we need to talk about oxygen toxicity and those infamous free radicals. Free radicals, huh? They sound kind of, I don't know, like a, like a sci-fi thing. Yeah, a little bit. But when we're talking about oxygen, they're the bad guys we got to watch out for. Oh, okay. I've heard of free radicals, but remind me, what are they again? So oxygen, it's not always stable. Mm -hmm. It can become reactive. Okay. Kind of like uh, an atom with a, with a bad attitude. Oh, okay. Stealing electrons from other molecules, mm -hmm. creating these unstable molecules that we call free radicals. And oxygen's going rogue, <laughs> causing trouble. Yeah, you could say that. Those stolen electrons, they set off a chain reaction of damage inside our cells. Oh, no. Messing with DNA, proteins, you name it. Like a tiny demolition crew at the molecular level. Oh, that's not a good image. Not good at all. But if this is going on all the time, yeah. how come we're not, like, falling apart? Because, luckily, our bodies are pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. We have these things called antioxidants. Right, antioxidants. They're the good guys. They are. They're like a, a cleanup crew. Okay. Patrolling and neutralizing those free radicals. So they stop those free radicals in their tracks. They do their best. Okay. But it's a delicate balance between oh. these free radicals and the antioxidants. If things tip too far one way or the other, yeah. well, that's when problems start. So it's like this ongoing battle going on. Kind of, yeah. A balancing act. When there are way more free radicals than our defenses can handle, yeah. we call that oxidative stress. Okay. Oxidative stress, I've heard that term before. Mm -hmm. It's linked to aging and disease, right? Exactly. It's like a, a wrench in the gears mm. disrupting cellular processes, yeah. causing damage that just, mm, well, accumulates over time. Okay, so it's like rust slowly eating away at metal. A good analogy, but then you also have oxygen toxicity. Right. You mentioned that earlier. That sounds even more intense than just oxidative stress. Yeah, oxidative stress, that's more like a slow burn. Yeah. Oxygen toxicity, that's an explosion. It's when you're breathing pure oxygen under high pressure. So that's like what divers have to worry about. Exactly. Too much oxygen, too fast, it overwhelms the body's defenses. Mm. It's a powerful reminder that even essential things yeah. can have a dangerous side. Oh, absolutely. It's a good thing our bodies have those defenses right. to keep the oxygen in check. Very much so. It's really fascinating, though, this duality. Mm. Essential for life, but also, you know, potentially harmful. But hey, want to go back in time for a bit? Always up for a little time travel. <laughs> All right. Let's 
journey back to a time when oxygen levels were through the roof. Okay, higher than they are now. Much higher. We're talking the Carboniferous period. The Carboniferous. Wait, wasn't that when we had those giant insects? You got it. Dragonflies with like meter wide wingspans, yeah. millipedes stretching over two meters long. It's like a, a monster movie. That's insane. I'm trying to picture that. These huge bugs just buzzing around. Right. It was a wild time. So what made them so big? Was it all that extra oxygen? It's definitely part of it. Insects, they breathe through those tubes. Trachea. Okay. And with all that oxygen in the air, well, those trachea were way more efficient. Like super lungs. Pretty much. It helped them grow to those incredible sizes. But there is some debate about exactly how high the oxygen levels were. Hmm. How do you even figure that out for something that long ago? It's tough. Like piecing together a puzzle with half the pieces missing. Oh, wow. But scientists are always working on it, trying to get a clearer picture. It's amazing to think about how much Earth's atmosphere has changed. It has. And all these changes, they really shaped the evolution of life on the planet. Yeah, for sure. But speaking of change... How do we even maintain the oxygen levels we have now? I mean, we've been talking about these wild swings in oxygen throughout history. Yeah. But right now, things seem pretty stable. They do. It's really all about balance. Life, chemistry, planetary processes, they all play a part. Mm. One of the key players is this thing called photorespiration. Photorespiration. Hold on. Plants are supposed to produce oxygen, right? Right. But photorespiration, that's when they take up oxygen and release CO2. Yeah, you got it. Is it the opposite of what they're supposed to be doing? It seems that way. But this photorespiration, it's this old pathway still around in a lot of plants. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a way for them to protect themselves. From what? From damage under certain conditions. So like a safety valve. Exactly. It's a reminder that even the most Basic things in nature can be really complex. Oh, absolutely. It's all about balance. You got balance. it. It's like this constant dance between opposing forces and yeah. those antioxidants we were talking about. Right, right. They're crucial for keeping that balance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the idea that more antioxidants is always better. Yeah, more is always better. Well, it's not that simple. It turns out that a little bit of oxidative stress, okay. that's actually important for our cells to function properly. Oh, really? So too many antioxidants, could that actually be bad? Mm -hmm. It could. Too little oxidative stress, our cells get lazy. Too much, well, that's when the damage starts. It's about hitting that sweet spot. The Goldilocks zone. Exactly. Not too much, not too little, just right. And Nick Lane, he talks about this double agent theory of aging in his book. Double agent theory, what's that about? It's this idea that oxidative stress, while it can be harmful, yeah. it can also be beneficial. Wait, how? It can act as a signal, like a wake-up call for the immune system, okay. helping fight off infection. Oh, interesting. But here's the thing. As we age, that oxidative stress signal, yeah. it can become chronic, leading to this persistent low-grade inflammation. So that's the bad part. Yeah, that's the bad part. It's oh. like our immune system is constantly on alert. Mm. And that inflammation, it contributes to a lot of age-related diseases. Okay, that's pretty sobering. But... So the very thing that helps us survive when we're younger mm -hmm. turns against us as we get older. It's like a Faustian bargain. Hmm. But if we understand this balance, it might help us develop new ways to slow down aging. Okay, so there's hope. There's definitely hope. It's not all doom and gloom. Okay, good. Because this has been a pretty wild ride so far. It has, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like we've gone from oxygen as this ancient poison yeah. to this, like, driver of evolution. Uh -huh. And now we're talking about how it might even be connected to why there are males and females. That's a lot to take in. It really is. But I have to ask, what does Nick Lane have to say about how this all connects to, like, the evolution of the sexes? It's all about how mitochondria get passed down. Okay. There's this this asymmetry between the sexes. Asymmetry. Okay, I'm intrigued. So think about it. Females, mm -hmm. they pass on their mitochondria through their eggs. Right, to their children? Exactly. Okay. So the health of those mitochondria, how much damage they've taken, yeah. that directly impacts the next generation. So if the mitochondria in a woman's egg are damaged, right. that could mean less healthy offspring. That's the idea. Wow. So... Protecting those mitochondria, yeah. it's crucial for females. Makes sense. And this is where things get really interesting. Okay, I'm ready. Lane, he suggests that the reason we don't inherit mitochondria from our fathers mm. is because, well, they're kind of like ticking time bombs. Oh, okay. Why? They've been exposed to 
more oxidative stress. Right, over their lifetime. Exactly. Passing them on wouldn't be, well, good for the offspring. So it's like a, a quality control thing? You could say that the yeah. females, they're the guardians of those healthy mitochondria. And the males are, well... Not so much. Expendable. Kind of, yeah. It might sound a little harsh. Yeah. But it makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. Yeah, it really changes how we think about the roles of of males and females. It does. In reproduction. It's not just about sperm and egg. Yeah. It's about this deeper level of of inheritance mm. at the cellular level. Okay. So how does all of this play into aging? Well, Lane's argument is that how our cells handle energy and how they deal with oxygen, uh -huh. that's key to how we age. It's not just about the years going by. Right. It's about how well our cells are actually working. Yeah. That makes sense. And a big part of that is, whoa, it's the mitochondria, right? Yeah, the powerhouses. They are. But what happens to them as we get older? Unfortunately, they don't age well. Oh, no. They get less efficient, mm -hmm. start leaking more of those free radicals, right. damage their own DNA. Uh -huh. It's this, this downward spiral. So it's like a vicious cycle. It is. The damage just keeps building up. Pretty much. And that mitochondrial decline has been linked to so many age-related diseases. Oh, wow. Like what? Heart disease. Okay. Alzheimer's. And even cancer and diabetes. Okay, that's that's a lot. Is there anything we can do to slow down this decline? The good news is yes. Okay, good. Things like calorie restriction. Okay. Exercise. Yeah, the usual suspects. They can actually improve mitochondrial function. So it's not just about our genes. It's also about about the choices we make. Exactly. And researchers are even looking into medications that could help wow. target those pathways that are involved in mitochondrial health. That's amazing. It's a really promising area of research. That's really good to hear. It means we have some control. We do. Yeah. Over how we age. It's not just, just a matter of fate. Nope. We're not just along for the ride. This whole deep dive has been incredible. It has been, hasn't it? I mean, oxygen is so much more than I ever realized. It's amazing how everything's connected, right? Yeah. The air we breathe, how our cells work. It all ties together. It really does. Well, we're about out of time for today's deep dive. Yeah. But before we go, what's what's the big takeaway here? Don't take oxygen for granted. Okay. It's so much more than just, you know, the air we breathe. Yeah. It's shaped life on Earth. In amazing ways. From the evolution of our cells yeah. to even why there are males and females. It makes you wonder what other stories are hidden in the everyday things we don't even think twice about. I know, right? That's the beauty of science. Always more to discover. Yeah, and as we learn more about oxygen, who knows what we'll find. Who knows? Well, thanks for taking us on this journey. Until next time, everyone, keep breathing deep and never stop exploring.